whatever. Nowadays, it seems that wherever you go, somebody is taking a selfie. Why is seeing images of ourselves so fascinating? Is it to record the moment so we can relive it later or share it with friends? Is it to track our changes as we grow? Or is it plain vanity? Before smartphones, if people wanted a selfie, they had to make it by hand. While some art historians think that there may have been some self portraits done in ancient times, not enough painting has survived from that era to know if it was a common thing. In the early 15th century, artists would sometimes include their own image in a larger composition, but not as the main subject. It wasn't until the advent of easel painting that artists used their own image as the main subject in their art on a regular basis. In 1433, Flemish artist Jan van Eyck painted a portrait that some art historians think was the first surviving self portrait painted in the Common Era. In Asian art, there's also a tradition of self portraits. Often, Asian artists painted themselves as gentlemen scholars reading or writing poetry. Women have also engaged in self portraiture. Until the 20th century, though, women were not really allowed in art school and could not study anatomy, which is why women who wanted to be artists often used themselves as models. Go in any Western art museum and you'll see a lot of self portraits. Why did artists use themselves as the subjects? Maybe they just wanted a way to explore their own personality, or maybe it was a way to mark the time while they were waiting for inspiration. Maybe they were going for self promotion and their self portraits showed off their skill. Some artists made a lot of self portraits. Rembrandt made over 70, and Van Off made over 40. But there are some artists who use their own likeness in a way that goes beyond their sense of self. They are using their own image to bring attention to social or cultural issues they find important. Carrie James Marshall has studied a lot of art history. One thing he has noticed is the lack of African faces in the canon of Western art in any rules that place black people in any positive or even normal light. He has set out to change that by making art that uses black faces to challenge the status quo. He's made self-portraits that use his own image to question our expectations about where and how we see people of color. Like Harry James Marshall, Stacey Tyrell identifies as black, but comes from a mixed heritage that includes Scottish. She feels that the experience of being black is too often defined by African American history, and that being black in today's world is more complex than that. Using makeup to make herself appear as she imagines her white ancestors might have looked, her self-portraits question what it means to be black and whether race is simply a social convention. Chinese artist Yue Minjian is best known for his grinning pink figures. He uses this image over and over, placing his smiling face in many different scenarios. Sometimes his figures are found in scenes from Chinese mythology, and sometimes in compositions from famous Western paintings. His paintings use humor to address what it means to live in modern China. When asked why she painted so many self portraits, Mexican artist Frida Kahlo replied that it was because she was the subject she knew best. As a young woman, Kahlo was in a terrible accident that left her in pain for much of her life. She married the mural painter Diego Rivera, but they had a rocky marriage. At the time she lived, Kahlo thought that Mexico was seen as a second rate country. She insisted upon using the images from her country's folklore in her paintings to show the beauty and depth of Mexican culture. Although there are many beautiful and exquisite artworks made with clay, ceramics is often seen as more of a craft than an art form. In the 1960s, on the west coast of the US, a group of artists took on the art world's view of traditional ceramics and what they saw as the overly dramatic and ultra-serious approach to art in the American art scene. This movement would later become known as West Coast Funk. Robert Arneson was one of the leaders of this approach. He often uses his own image to thumb his nose at society's norms. While all five of these artists use their own image in their work, their intention is to make us look beyond their likenesses and to consider the social and cultural status quo. The artists become symbols for something greater than themselves.